So I'm going to insufflate the elbow. I'm going to do this right through the posterior portal. You can also do this through the soft spot portal as well. Just take an 18 gauge. Usually 15 to 20 cc's will do it. Usually you can see the elbow extend a little, which it does a little bit in this case. There we go. That helps keep the neurovascular structures away from the bony structure there. Next step, we'll create a proximal anterior medial portal. I basically will palpate the intermuscular septum. This portal is typically about a centimeter and a half to two, two centimeters proximal to the um, medial epicondyle. You can feel the medial intermuscular septum. You want to make sure your nerve is certainly posterior to that, and you want to go just anterior to that. I'll use a spinal needle once I've insufflated to look at the trajectory of my portal, typically aiming for the radial head here. You can feel the pop through the capsule, and with any luck, we'll have some return of fluid. And we can see our fluid coming from the elbow joint itself. We'll take a knife at this point. Key thing to remember is we're just incising the skin here, making sure not to go into the subcutaneous tissue. There are many subcutaneous ner nerves. We want to make sure not to damage those nerves. Take the scope at this point. We'll recreate the same trajectory as we just did our spinal needle. Okay, as you can see here, we're visualizing the radiocapillar teller joint. If you need confirmation, obviously rotating the elbow, the uh, distal aspect of the hand here. This will bring the radiocapillar teller joint. You can really evaluate almost the entirety of the radial head through this. Typically, this is a good place to find loose bodies in this area, particularly if you have an osteochondral defect, and this allows us to localize our anterior lateral portal. We typically do this by palpating the capsule. Initially, it gives us an idea where we're going to be, and then we use a spinal needle to basically localize this portal. You can see this right at the level of the radiocapillar teller joint here. So getting a little outflow, this allows us to see the chondral surfaces much better, and we've been able to basically localize our lateral portal. I'll take a knife now that we've localized our lateral portal. We'll pull the spinal needle. That way we can just size the subcutaneous skin here. Take a switching stick, basically establish our lateral portal, and then we can use sl simply slide a cannula over that. Once we've got our cannula in for our lateral portal, we're able to take a probe. We can palpate any of the articular surfaces to see if there's any chondral lesions. We can also palpate in here, visualize up here around the capsule. Looking for any loose bodies is really the key in the anterior compartment, particularly when evaluating osteochondral defect. Often you can see the osteochondral defect on the front of the capitellum. It's just very difficult to treat due to the radial head, and that's why most osteochondral defects of the capitellum are treated through the posterior approach. So once we've evaluated the anterior compartment of the elbow thoroughly, we switch to the posterior aspect. We've now switched to the viewing from the lateral portal here. You can see the medial aspect of the elbow there. You can certainly see the coronoid there. You can flex and extend. You can certainly evaluate for any loose bodies. Typically or hide right there in the fossa. You can use this as a switching stick if you need to hold the anterior aspect of the capsule out. So you can get very good visualization of the anterior compartment. And as I reiterated, most osteochondral defects are treated from the posterior aspect. So this is just viewing to make sure that there's no concomitant pathology and there are no additional loose bodies. Here's our posterior central portal here. I'll use a spinal needle to localize this. Then basically we'll take the knife. This is right through the triceps, so you're a little bit safer back here. You don't have to worry about as many as of the uh, cutaneous nerves, so you can go right through the triceps there. Insert my scope directly through my posterior central portal. We'll use a spinal needle to localize our posterior lateral portal, which is typically gonna be perpendicular to this. Once you can see the tip of the spinal needle, you know you're where you need to be and you can make your additional portal. Creating a space is important. Okay, so as we enter the posterior aspect of the elbow, we clean out a little bit. You can see the tip of the olecranon here on my probe and we follow the tip of the olecranon. We really need to check out the medial gutter over here as you follow the olecranon around. Go around the corner here. Lift up some of the tough tissue with your probe. You want to make sure there are no loose bodies in the medial gutter, as you can see right here. Follow the olecranon tip back around here. 
Always look at the Olecranon fossa. This is a great place for loose bodies to hide. You need to evaluate that. And then once we've made sure there are no loose bodies up there, we can make our way back to the lateral aspect of the gutter right here. And this is where we need to start evaluating, clearing out to get to our osteochondral defect. There you can see come into play the radiocapillotellar joint as I sneak down here, I'm removing the plica and the synovium for better visualization. So at this point, I'm going to switch from the posterior viewing portal to my lateral viewing portal here. Place our switching stick here. So now we've got a pretty good view of the radiocapillotellar joint. We'll localize our more distal portal at this point. We can use finger. Okay, I'll take the shaver, continue to debride a little bit of the synovium around the radial head, just giving us some space to work. Okay, that gives us a pretty good view there. The radiocapitellar joint will move to our distal portal. Okay, here we see the posterior aspect of the elbow right here. You can see the radial head as I rotate it here. As we flex up, we have a good indication of this osteochondral lesion and the remainder of the case has to be done with the elbow flex to visualize this. So we'll use a ring tip, tip curette and we'll clean up the edges of this in an effort to get a stable margin. That's important. Get all the loose pieces of the cartilage. And after we've used the ring curette, I like to stabilize the edges with the torpedo shaver. See the edges makes it very nice. It protects the other aspects of the cartilage so we don't do any iatrogenic damage. Keep it on low suction in this area, very small space. Make sure we get all the way around the lesion. You see we've cleaned it up, we've removed all the excess edges there. Now we're ready for our, for our marrow stimulation. Okay, so we'll use the power pick for our marrow stimulation. Here you can see we'll keep it disengaged to get through the soft tissue. Okay, once in the joint we're able to deploy the power pick. Just slowly create marrow vents here starting at the periphery of the lesion here. Okay, now that we've completed our marrow stimulation, we'll turn our attention to drying out the joint and applying the bite cartilage. Okay, we'll take a spinal needle to help us dry out the joint. The spinal needle is a nice option to dry out the joint. You can certainly dry out your marrow elements. There, you can dry out a little here. And that's a great option to have to keep your joint dry while you're obtaining biocartilage. You can remove any areas where you're not sure that there's might be bone. And that did a great job of drying out the joint. Another great option for drying out the joint are these swabs that can be inserted into the elbow and used to dry out the joint even further. Hooking up suction to this is great. You can finish drying out the OCD area. See, it fits nicely into that area, and that can be removed, and you're ready for your biocartilage application. So here you can see this is our biocartilage that's uh, already been loaded into our syringe. We have our ACP, which we're going to mix to the biocartilage. It's about 0.8 cc's to every 1 cc of biocartilage. We have our new improved technology here on the set. If you can appreciate this, this is our arthro paddle. This allows much easier and more controlled application of the biocartilage, particularly if you're in a tight spot like the elbow. This is a great advantage here. This is our stylus, which allows us to control the entry of the biocartilage. And again, this is our fiber and glue applicator, which allows us to seal the biocartilage once in the defect. To insert the biocartilage, I'm going to make a little accessory portal just to the lateral aspect. Okay, we're ready for our arthro paddle. Here you can see the new improved contour and design. We can slide this in, our lateral portal. Okay, so now that we've inserted the arthro paddle in there, I can turn it against the osteochondral lesion. It's preloaded with the biocartilage, and now we can use the impactor to place the biocartilage in the lesion. Okay, now we'll insert the biocartilage into the lesion. Very nice. You can see it filling up very slowly. All right, let's stop there, see what we have. I think we're going to have very nice fill here. I'm going to use this to impact it a little bit. That's beautiful, as you can see there. Gorgeous. I'm going to remove this from the elbow. So we'll bring our uh, fiber and glue inserter to our superior portal to utilize gravity. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. You can see it coating the biocartilage. Very nice. 
As the glue is setting, we typically wait about five minutes for that glue to dry to seal the lesion. The patient then uh, is placed in a dry sterile bandage after the portals are closed. We apply a sling afterwards and we see him back in the office in one week. Once the patient follows up in a week in the office, we remove the stitches. The patient's fitted in a hinged elbow brace. We typically start physical therapy for active range of motion. Our goal is to obtain full active range of motion at six weeks at which the brace is discontinued. We start some light resistance activity at that time and our return to play goal is six months with these patients.